I now give the floor to the observer of the State of Palestine. Mr. President, <coughs> colleagues, I thank you, Mr. President, for convening this important meeting in response to the urgent request to resume the 10th emergency special session of the General Assembly to address the severe protection crisis that continues to be faced by the Palestinian people under Israeli's occupation in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, and particularly at this time in the besieged, blockaded Gaza Strip. We appreciate the seriousness with which this request has been carried forth upon the initiative of the Arab group and the OIC, and are deeply grateful to all the countries supporting this principled effort, including by co-sponsorship of the draft resolution that is now before the Assembly. This initiative represents a genuine effort to address the recent escalation of violence and worsening conditions on the ground, and it is firmly based on the belief that by, un by unholding shared responsibilities in line with the Charter, international law, and relevant UN resolutions, we can contribute to the efforts to defuse tensions, de-escalate the situation, deter further violence, and protect civilian lives. Mr. President, our decision to approach the Assembly was prompted by the Security Council's failure to act due to the veto cast on 1st June by a permanent member, which prevented adoption of the draft resolution that had been submitted by Kuwait and supported by a majority of council members with a view to advancing the consideration of measures to guarantee the safety, well-being, and protection of the Palestinian civilian population under Israeli's occupation. On the heels of that regrettable vote in the Security Council, we somberly marked last week the 51st anniversary of Israeli's occupation of Palestinian and Arab territories in 1967. And we're reminded again of the decades of failed attempts to bring an end to this occupation, to realize the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, including to self-determination and freedom, and to establish a just peace based on the long-standing international consensus enshrined in the relevant UN resolutions. This illegal belligerent military occupation is the primary source and root cause of the recent and emergent crisis we face, and is the stark backdrop for our continued appeals to the international community for assistance and intervention. As the occupation intensifies in its brutality, witnessed every single day in the oppression, intimidation, and humiliation of Palestinian men, women, and children by the Israeli occupying forces and extremist settlers, and as the dangerous political impasse persists, the need to protect our people under this occupation remains urgent and unquestionable. While we would have clearly preferred that the Security Council uphold its duties, the negative outcome has only emboldened Israelis' impunity, further endangering Palestinian lives. Thus, we have been compelled to continue our efforts in the UN system to secure protection for our people. 
We cannot remain silent in the face of the, of the most violent crimes and human rights violations being systematically perpetrated against our people. Nobody would remain silent. And not only that, we will continue to do everything possible in order to protect our people. This is a right to all people, and the Palestinian people should not be the exception. Faced with the recent killing, 129 Palestinian civilians, including 16 children, and the injury of more than 13,600 civilians by the occupying forces, mainly as a result of lethal assaults against peaceful civilian protesters in Gaza, faced with the inhumane suffocation and collective punishment of two million Palestinians under Israeli's blockade of Gaza, which has caused humanitarian devastation and brought the situation there to the brink of collapse. Faced with the incessant cruel repression and displacement of our people and the destructive settlement colonization of our land in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, as we, as we are witnessing in these days in Al Khan Al Ahmar and Abu Al Hilwe, where Palestinian Bedouin families, over half children, are facing the mass demolition of their homes and properties, including schools, and the forced transfer of the entire community. Faced with all of this, we cannot suffice with just an outcry or outrage. To condemn, to regret, to express concern is not sufficient. We need action, we need protection of our civilian population. And why should that be offending anyone? We're just asking for a simple thing. We want our civilian population to be protected. Is that a crime to ask for? It is our duty to address all aspects of this crisis and grave injustice and to alleviate in any way we can the suffering of our people as we have repeatedly committed ourselves to doing through all available, peaceful, and leg legal means. We ask for your invaluable solidarity and support in this endeavor. The General Assembly always stood with people who were under oppression, suffering, and struggling for ending colonialism. And we trust that the General Assembly will continue to be on the side of the Palestinian people to live in freedom and dignity in their homeland after we end the Israeli occupation to the land of our state and enjoy the independence of our state and therefore save the two-state solution, our state with, the, with East Jerusalem as its capital. Mr. President, as stated at the outset, the draft resolution before the Assembly is intended to contribute to de-escalation of the volatile situation to deter violence against civilians and to promote consideration of measures to protect Palestinian civilians. This process begins with a request to the Secretary General to submit a report in this regard, including inter alia recommendations regarding an international protection mechanism. In the meantime, the Secretary General and UN Special Coordinator are urged to continue engaging with concerned partners in the efforts to address urgent humanitarian and economic development needs in Gaza in particular, which we strongly encourage all to support. The draft is rooted in international law and UN resolutions on the Palestine question and on the protection of civilians. The concept of protection of civilians was invented by the West, mainly Europe, it is your concept. You fight everywhere to, to see civilians protected everywhere. You should not exclude the Palestinian people from enjoying protection as well. It addresses all relevant dimensions of the current crisis, including violence in both sides. 
with an unequivocal condemnation of all acts of violence against civilians. We say that, but somebody would only think of one party and totally ignore the Palestinian people as if they have no rights and as if they are not part of humanity. That is unacceptable. This is one-sided and it is not balanced. It is a, it is a balanced draft reached after extensive negotiations during the preceding, the preceding of the Security Council process and the follow-up consultations and good faith outreach that has sought the support of all delegations. We therefore firmly reject the bad faith attempt to insert an amendment that would radically unbalance the text and shift the Assembly's focus away from the core objective of protecting civilians and upholding international law. We call on all delegations to reject the politicization of this serious issue. This amendment to be introduced the last minute and to try to abuse the innocent principal position by some and many to allow everyone to submit amendments. If you are genuine and you negotiate in good faith, you submit your amendments early in the ball game, and you negotiate in a good faith, and you, exp you express desire and willingness to be on board because you want the resolution to be adopted. But these games and gimmicks of last minute to try to appear that you are truly want to be balanced, I don't think that these things will be sold to very sophisticated diplomats in this chamber. And as someone said, in this room, there are no Boy Scouts or, Boys or Girl Scouts in this business. All of you are very sophisticated diplomats. You know the real thing, and you know the games and the gimmicks. And we trust you fully to do the right thing and to sift between those who try for the last minute for expediency to fool you by introducing amendments and these are in bad faith because they are not genuine. If they were genuine, they would engage from the beginning in the Security Council, and we would have been in a different place than this place today. The reality in this draft constitutes a, repressible, a responsible, yet very modest effort, especially considering the severity, extent, and protracted nature of the protection crisis and nightmare being endured by Palestinians, young and old, under Israeli's occupation and across over 70 years of this Nakba. We appeal for the support of all delegations, consistent with long-standing principal positions on the Palestine question and the historic efforts of the international com community to ensure the application of international law to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and to advance the achievement of a just, lasting, comprehensive and peaceful solution. Moreover, we urge engagement by all concerned states in the efforts to remedy the prevailing crisis, including by support to UN agencies on the ground, working day and night to meet humanitarian needs particularly UNRWA, and by sharing relevant proposals with the Secretary General in support of the fulfillment of his mandate. We urge that everything possible to be done to uphold the collective obligation to protect civilians in all circumstances, including Palestinian civilians, and to avert the further destabilization of the situation with a view to the salvaging the prospects for peace to which we remain committed and for which we have not yet lost all hope. And I thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the observer of the State of Palestine.